Uh, let's bring in David Ignatius, the veteran journalist, author, uh, columnist, editor at The Washington Post. Uh, David, your name was already invoked once during our coverage today. I'm curious, uh, having just heard from Frank Figluzzi, a kind of recitation of the separatist groups we've known and loved around the world, I'm tempted to ask you where this ranks in stories you've covered in this country, but why stop there? Stories you've covered in foreign capitals, foreign governments with uh, 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 similar undercurrents. Yeah, Brian, this looks like an insurgency. Uh, you looked at the, at the faces, the rage, the lawlessness, the attempt to strike at symbols of power, the way in which the Internet has been used as a source of recruitment, uh, mobilization of people. Uh, th there are some eerie uh, parallels. I would just want to underline something that Frank said a few moments ago. The people who were uh, pl planning for the law enforcement uh, response, uh, planning the police presence, planning the FBI role, knew that the Capitol was a target. They, they expected that there would be a march down Pennsylvania Avenue from the Ellipse uh, after the initial gathering in the morning, uh, and they assumed that the Capitol Police would be able to expand their perimeter and protect the Capitol. It's not like they didn't see this coming. They did. And I think one of the riddles that we, we need to ask is, just on a basic tactical level, why weren't there more Capitol Police uh, present? Why didn't they call for backup sooner? How did they allow this breach to happen uh, so quickly? So I, I very much want to underline that. I want, just want to make one other point. The officials that I've been talking to over the last several weeks, who, again, saw this crisis coming on Jan January 6, have been concerned above all about the danger that Donald Trump would try to draw the U.S. military into protecting his presidency, into his challenge of, of the election result, uh, some new invocation of the Insurrection Act on his behalf uh, to try to advance his cause. They were de determined to keep the military out of uh, any effort to, to challenge the election. And in that sense, um, I think we can be glad, even though the, the response looked awfully timid, that, that U.S. military troops were not involved. The National Guard was not visibly present during the difficult moments. Those images, you know, kind of an American Tiananmen, I think, is what, is what these insurgents wanted. They didn't get that. They didn't get that moment of martyrdom that, that I think they, they, were, they were seeking. So I think that's part of, of what lies behind a response that puzzles a lot of us. Why wasn't it more forceful? It was because people did not want to militarize this. David, where do you think Mike Pence is? Who do you think he's talking to? Who do you hope he's talking to? Same applies to the, the leadership, uh, the, the gang of four, Schumer, McConnell, and by the way, their power flipped today in the midst of this, uh, Pelosi and McCarthy. Where are they all? What do you reckon they're talking about? Well, I think that they, they must feel a deep sense of embarrassment that they, they, they've enabled Trump uh, and that they can see now the cost. These, these images today, I think, have done more to undermine uh, the, the future of the, the Trump insurgency, if you will, than, than anything else. So people look at these images of people kind of luxuriating in Speaker Pelosi's office like they own it or, or cavorting in the, in the Senate chamber. People are disgusted by that. So I, I think if, if you're Speaker uh, Pelosi, you, you, you probably, uh, as, as embarrassing and upsetting as this is, you, you feel that this movement has blown itself up in, in some ways. I, I, th I think McConnell made clear this morning before this assault on the Capitol that he couldn't abide uh, Trump's uh, uh, lawlessness, Trump's defiance of the election result. He, he jumped ship uh, visibly and publicly. So I, I, th I think the conversation, I, I can't uh, guess what Pence is, is thinking, uh, but but I think the conversation among the among uh, House and Senate Republicans is we need to be very careful. This is now a movement that Americans are going to look at and say that doesn't look like something I want to be part of. 
Sorry to, for the delay there. Um, this is Rachel Maddow uh, jumping in from the other side of the studio here in New York. Mr. Ignatius, thanks so much for joining us. I, I was, I'm struck by these two really rich loads of reporting that you have had recently. One, uh, which you were just describing this desire, uh, concern among upper reaches of the military, um, that the president not be allowed to effectively invoke military force to protect his presidency. And seeing today there being no visible use of the military in a way that might have created a sort of martyrdom moment for the protesters. On the other hand, though, you've also had this very rich load of reporting about the preparations for today's um, events describing, you reported yesterday, planning for this week's protest has been coordinated by an interagency team headed by the acting attorney general and the acting defense secretary and secretary of Homeland Security and Interior, backed by the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Um, and from your reporting, I felt very comforted that there was a lot more planning than we had expected, that as you reported, if they tried to storm the Capitol, they would be arrested. And, and I do feel like... Um, there's a there's a big difference between having tanks in the streets and having a Tiananmen moment for these protesters, a Tiananmen moment of martyrdom and them being able to run freely through the Capitol today and not get arrested and cause all the damage that they did. It feels like whatever planning happened, they were underprepared for the amount of violence that was brought to bear, brought to bear against the building. I think you put it exactly right, Rachel. I think they were right not to want to militarize this. They thought they had adequate forces. They they, they thought that the, the 6,000 to 8,000 D.C. police plus FBI plus uh, SWAT teams, uh, uh, law enforcement people from various federal agencies that they were gathering would be sufficient. They they put a lot of reliance on the Capitol Police, and I think as we look back at what happened, that was, that was misplaced. But I do think you're right. They were, they were underprepared. They, they um, were sensible in, in not wanting this to look like a military confrontation. But the coordination, uh, the ability to move as quickly as the protesters, protesters the insurgents did, um, was 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 lacking, and I think that's going to be at the center of of, of the examination that should t take place a, a, about what happened. But but again, I, I think the the importance of the fact that this this movement of in, this insurgency uh, has undermined its cause with actions that. Uh, seem to uh, repel uh, even the, the most passionate uh, critics of, of Biden's election. People were part of this challenge to cert the certification of the Electoral College uh, uh, vote. I think that's really important. That's, that's a big part of what happened today is, is that this movement, uh, you know, essentially popped its own balloon. In terms of the, the preparations that you were able to report on and the thinking of the people involved in sort of bracing for this this moment, which I think did go off the rails in a way that wasn't anticipated, um, should we expect that the people who broke into the Capitol and broke those windows and carried firearms into the into the district and um, did all these other committed all these other federal crimes that we've seen committed today on 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 tape and in film? Should we expect that they'll be prosecuted? Is that a, is that a policy decision for the incoming um, Justice Department? Is that something that, um, that U.S. attorneys will be allowed to pursue? Well, it's, it's the right question. Uh, obviously, it's, it's a question for, for, for the new administration. But I would think that law enforcement, the FBI, the Capitol Police itself are just deeply uh, embarrassed, enraged at what was uh, what was done today, and and they will want to be they'll be at the, at the front of those uh, wanting a prosecution of the of the people who who vandalized, invaded, and vandalized the, the Capitol. Uh, so I think there's going to be a, a movement inside from from federal law enforcement itself uh, demanding this. Uh, again, I, I, as people, uh, talking to my sources tonight before coming on the air, what, what I heard was, we think the right force was in place, but we can't answer the question of why it didn't move more quickly and decisively in the key moments before the Capitol was, was seized, was invaded.
David Ignatius uh, with Washington Post, a foreign affairs columnist, and so much more. Sir, it's an honor to have you with us here tonight to help us understand this ongoing situation. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. I would mention, um, as I handed it back over to my friend Nicole um, Wallace here, that um, we've been wondering sort of behind the scenes why some of the president's more inflammatory and inciting tweets have been removed from his Twitter feed uh, over the past um, hour or so. Twitter's just put out a, a statement indicating that they required that um, and are threatening to shut down the president's Twitter account for inciting violence.